Hello. So today we're going to take this bullet Mustang stock and we're going to mod the hell out of it. So I'm going to do a section of this video for everything we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and add a kill switch. We're going to add two phase switches for the two humbuckers. And we're going to add a Bigsby style system down here, um, a Jaguar style bridge. Uh, and up here, we're going to change these to locking tuners. Um, I'm also going to sand and uh, polish the entire fretboard, fret edges, um, and the fingerboard itself, uh, and the back of the neck too. We've got some dot inlays we're going to put on here, and then finally, to make it sound the best it can, we're going to add some decals. So, hope you enjoy it. All right. The first thing we're going to do before we begin is we're going to measure uh, the height of the E strings, because when we install the new bridge, we have to make sure to uh, set the outside E strings, and then we use this tool here to measure the radius. Now the radius is basically, you take the curve of the neck, and if it extended all the way out and made a circle, it's the radius of that circle. That's how you get the radius. I know that this guitar is a 12 inch radius. So the way this works is you take this tool, and you set it across your strings, and ideally all the strings should be touching this, and there should be no strings ringing out from underneath. Now. From the factory, they actually seem to have nailed it. Um, all the strings are touching, but we're replacing this bridge. So what you do is you set the height of this string and this string uh, with the new bridge on, and then you set this right here, and then you adjust all of these until they fit inside this circle. So what I do have here is I have this little string action measurement tool, and what we want to do is we want to measure at the 12th fret. So we're going to go here to the 12th fret, and... Don't know if you can see that, but it looks like two is the number for the uh, low E string. So then we take it and we do the very same thing over here. And if we look here, it looks like it's around 1.75. I don't know if you can see that, but 1.75. So I'm gonna note those down for when I do the new bridge. Um, so the next step, I'm gonna take these strings off. I'm going to drop in the new tuners and then drop in the new bridge. All so right, so to take these tuners off, it's really easy. You just get your socket that fits, you stick it on there, and you just loosen her up. So let's go ahead and get that. It didn't take much. So this guitar came okay from the factory. Uh, I noticed one of the pickups doesn't work, so I'm gonna be under there rewiring it anyway but I don't know what's going on with that. And uh, there was some buzzing, and these tuners were really loose. So that's not good. You shouldn't have those problems straight from the factory, but, you know, it, it's a get-what-will-you-pay-for kind of a deal. But, like, if you're buying this for your kid or something, and, you know, you're not a guitar tech, or they're not a guitar tech, and don't really know how to adjust an instrument, you know, that's... That's not good. I don't care because I'm going to be modifying this guitar anyway, so it's not a big deal to me. But, yeah, so that happened. Um, yeah, I can't do this one-handed. I'm going to take this off and I'll come back. All right, so I got it off. Uh, as you can see, there's just this piece here. And then you've got this little washer. But, yeah, that's it. That's, that's your stock tuner. So... That's where it was. Pretty cheap. Uh, people complained a lot about these tuners. You can get some locking tuners really cheap, less than 20 bucks sometimes. This one right here I got, less than 20 bucks. Uh, it's black and they're locking. I hope that they're an exact fit. If not, we'll do some drilling. So I'm gonna take the rest of these off uh, and then we'll try to put one of these tuners in. out. Here's the new ones. So as you can see, there's a little wheel here. Uh, what that does is it locks the string in place you only really need half a turn or a whole turn if you do it that way. It keeps your guitar in tune really well. So let's go ahead and see if this will fit. So let's see. Uh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I think it will. Let's put the washer in there. Let's stick this in there. It's a little loose, but it does fit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick this in and tighten it up and uh, I'll report back to you if it stays. We already need some surgery. So as you can see on these tuners, you see how there's those two 
little uh, humps. They both have them, right? But this one's taller. So if I try to fit it in there, it doesn't exactly line up. It's just a little tiny bit off. So what I'm gonna have to do, you can see there, it just, it just isn't gonna work. So I have two options. I can either drill a bigger hole for this or I can do drill two smaller holes for these. And that's what I'm gonna opt to do. I'm just gonna drill two small, very small holes, very shallow holes so that those will fit. All right, don't judge my drill skills, but here you go. I went ahead and uh, drilled extra holes here. So now we take this guy and we put him right here. You'll see that now it sits flush in there. Come on, focus on me, come on. So yeah, I don't know why it won't focus. That's frustrating, sorry. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze it. All right, the tuners are on. It looks great. They're a little misaligned, but that's not gonna affect the tuning. Let's look at the back. And there's not a gap in between any of these. They all look good. So yeah, let's go ahead now. We're gonna get this bridge off. So this bridge is interesting. It's one piece, you string through the bridge and out the back right here in the bullet of the string. I always called it that because my first guitar came with Fender bullets, but the bullet, little metal part of the string pulls against the back of this bridge here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just take these four screws out and remove the bridge. Uh, and we're gonna install a Jaguar bridge, which I have over here somewhere in this bag. And then we're gonna put the Jaguar bridge here. It's a floating bridge. Then we're going to grab this Bigsby copy tailpiece and we're gonna stick it here. So yeah, I will come back after I get this bridge off. So we off. got the bridge off and I made an interesting discovery. It appears that the ground wire uh, is, they just cut a hole in the middle of the chassis. The ground wire's just sitting there. So I gotta make sure that this is touching the new bridge. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that right now. See how well I can do that. You can see what it is. So here it is. Um, it's just a Jaguar bridge. Now this is a little bit different. It's kind of like a, a hybrid between a Jaguar and a Mustang bridge. So it doesn't have the stupid grooves like the Jazzmaster or the Jaguar, um, but it's the same shape. It's got that little, what do they call it? Cigar box shape. So the way that this goes is it just kind of sits right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that and uh, I'll be back after that's done. So before we stick this bridge on, um, I almost forgot to mention something enormously important when installing a bridge. So there's something called scale length. And what that is, is it's the length from the nut, which is this white piece right here, to the saddles on the bridge. Uh, most Fender guitars are like 25 and a half. Gibsons and Epiphones are 24 and three quarters. This guitar is a 24 inch um, scale length. So what that means is we need to measure from here all the way down and mark where 24 inches is and make sure that our saddles are in the middle, right at 24 inches. The reason I suggest that is this is an adjustable saddle. You can move these each forward or backward. So if it's sitting right at 24, you can move it forward or backward when you're adjusting that intonation. So let's go ahead and measure that right now. Uh, I have this yardstick right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna set it right there. Make sure that it's nice and flat, okay? All right, and there's your 24. So what I'm gonna do is take something and mark it right there. So I'm gonna grab some tape and stick it there. All right, so I got it marked off for the bridge. Problem is, pick guard's in the way. So that line right there is the line for what's, you know, the straight line and the center line right there. And it needs to fit right over it, but it can't because the pick guard's in the way. So what I'm gonna need to do is take the pick guard off. The pick guard off and I made another interesting discovery. It looks like they painted the inside of this with the uh, conductive paint to prevent buzzing. I will say out of the box when I plugged it in, there was no, no humming or anything like that. So that's pretty cool. There's your pickups. 
Still not sure why this one isn't making any sound. Like I followed these cables and they look fine to me, but I can't tell why it's not making any noise. So that might be a separate deal. I mean, this solder job doesn't look too good right here. So not really sure if that's what the problem is or not, but regardless, now I freed this spot so that I can take the bridge I can set it over the top like that. What I'm gonna do is line it up perfectly, make sure that it's completely and totally in the center. And the way this bridge works, there's these little thimbles. So you drill a hole that's the diameter of this part, and then you take a rubber mallet and you hammer it down in there. And then by design, the bridge fits inside there and it wobbles back and forth for the tremolo system. That's actually part of the appeal. People say to wrap these in tape to keep your guitar in tune, but that defeats the purpose. The original, the purpose of the bridge moving that way is so that it can rock back and forth as you use the tremolo. So you kind of defeat the purpose of your tremolo and uh, if you're locking that in place, to each their own, I guess. But I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna mark this off, make sure it's exactly in the center, measure this diameter, and then I'm going to drill my holes. New bridge is in. These are new posts. There's that ground wire. I'm gonna have to figure out what to do with it. But yeah, so now we're gonna put the Bigsby on. I went ahead and got this installed. What I did was basically I just lined it up. Um, I put these strings in here and ran them down, made sure that they fit in the saddles all the way down to the tremolo system, vibrato system, I should say. Looks pretty good. It's in there pretty secure. There's a little spring here that's bolted into the top. So yeah, it's coming along. Next, uh, I'm going to work on the pickups. Um, I'm gonna add some switches to the pit guard. I'm going to cut the, uh, the end of the pit guard here to make sure that this bridge can fit on it because this is within the way. And then I'm going to sand and polish everything and put on the decals. So I ran into a little bit of an issue. Um, I looked at the neck humbucker and uh, it looks fine. The wiring looks a little bit loose, but I'm not really sure why um, it's not it's not working. It won't it won't turn on. I hope it's not the switch. Although if it is, that's very easy to fix. So probably what I'm going to do is swap out the switch, and I'm also going to swap out the neck humbucker with one from my Made in Mexico 2007 Stratocaster. Um, it was an SSH. I modded it to an SSS, so I might take that humbucker out and put it in the neck position of the Mustang. So I'm gonna do a quick research here, uh, look up some wiring diagrams, and we'll see what happens. Success. So I took this pickup out of my Made in Mexico 2007 Stratocaster, this humbucker, and I just put it in the place of the one that the guitar came with, and it works. I just wired it up the same way, as you can see there. Now these humbuckers that come with the Mustang, they're wired with only two wires. Now inside this green casing, you have your normal four wires plus bare, but they just wired them together to make it simple. It's only a three-way switch. As you can see, this Fender humbucker, which has no part number, so I have no idea what humbucker it actually is, has four cables. So what you do is you take your white and black. Now this is for Fender. Every, most pickups are different colors depending on the manufacturer. I took black and white and I soldered them together and taped it off with electrical tape. Green is hot. You put that in the selector position right here. So this would be the position this way. And then you take your red and your uh, bare. Those are your ground. And I just grounded that to this common ground position here. Now, looking in this cavity, I noticed that there's not really room to put all the switches I wanted to put in here. I wanted to put two phase switches and a kill switch, but there's just not room. So what I've decided to do is just do the kill switch, which is right here. Very, very simple switch. It's a momentary off on switch, so it does nothing when it's not being pressed. It does something when you press it. And the easiest way to do this is you wire the switch itself to ground. One end of the switch goes to out to the uh, input or output hot, and the other end of the switch goes to the output ground. 
And the way this works is when you press this button, it shorts out the entire guitar because it connects the ground to the hot, which is what a kill switch is. You press it and it shuts everything off. You let go and it all comes back. So I'm doing that just because I always wanted one and I never really had the opportunity to, to do it. And it's very, very simple. It's just two solders and, well, three if you count the ground. So I got to find a place to put this. I'm thinking of putting it like right here next to this switch here. I'm not really sure yet. I have to check the cavity and make sure that there's room for it first. So uh, yeah, all you have to do is just drill a hole for the circumference of this. And then you put this through and then you tighten a washer around it and then solder. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We got the kill switch installed. So that's cool. And uh, yeah, so we got the pick guard put back on. So now we're gonna polish her up. But before we do that, let's go over here and turn on the amp. I already did this, but I wanted to do this on the video. All right, so. Let me get my pick. Really any metal will work. So basically, here's the switch. Press it, and it stops. Let go, it comes back. So, what I'm doing there is, uh, if you can hear the feedback in the amp when you press these poles, then uh, they're on. So this is a purposefully dirty channel with no noise gate uh, for the purpose of this test. So yeah, now I'm going to go ahead and screw this control plate back on and polish it up and sand the neck. So the sanding and finishing is going to happen a couple of ways. Um, the first thing that I do, I get some old English. You can also use this actual lem I haven't even opened this because I like the old English better. Um, or just some lemon oil and you get you some steel wool 000 is what I used and you put a little bit of dab of this on the steel wool and you go through each fret and you just lightly with the steel wool clean it um, and then you also can take the steel wool and you can do the edges as well and you can do the back of the neck if you want um, what this does is it prevents that scratchiness that happens all down the neck. It polishes it up real good and uh, the cracks will soak up this oil, keep it moist. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. The polishing's all done with the steel wool. And I don't know if you can tell, but ooh, it's nice and smooth now. Uh, believe it or not, the fret ends are actually not sharp at all. So I'm not even going to bother sanding that. So the last thing to do is uh, polish the body. Oh, one other thing. The nut needs to be lubricated and you can use a pencil for that. All you do is you just kind of do this. You do that in each of the grooves and that graphite will actually lubricate the strings for you you in tune. So that's actually a uh, very handy pro tip for you. All right, I'm going to clean up the body and string it. So we got the strings back on. What I'm going to do now is what we talked about at the beginning. I'm going to take this ruler here and we're going to measure the 12th fret of the E string, this one, and then the 12th fret, fret of that string. Um, we're going to set both of those to what they were before. So as you can see, it's way high. Should be down to there. Over here, it's also way high. It should be down to there. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the height. And then uh, we're going to use our radius tool to set the other strings. Several updates. Uh, it's all done, though. That's the good news. Um, before we go into the cosmetics, let's talk about under the hood. So a couple things. First, this, the reason that this pickup wasn't working is because the switch was bad. 
that the guitar came with right here. So I, I'm not happy with Fender for that. Um, luckily, Guitar Center sells the Switch. Uh, actually, it's for a Gibson style of a guitar, but it comes in a, it looks like this. Um, so that's what I have installed here. And so after I replaced the switch, everything worked great. Um, I had the white humbucker in there, right here, from my Strat. This thing is really low output, which I think was by design, because it came from a SSH Strat. This one was drowning it out. So I went ahead and put the stock one back in there. I put these uh, chrome covers over it. We got our tremolo system here. Put some stars, because why not? This emblem here is actually from uh, my 1995 Mustang that I no longer have. Um, I replaced it because it was the other one was broken, so I replaced both of them. Kept this one, and it was just sitting in a drawer, so I thought, hey, it's a Mustang. Put it on there. I got these uh, inlays from Amazon. I went ahead and installed those. They look great. Put a star up top. So yeah, that's the whole thing. I'm really happy with it. it stays in tune pretty well. I intonated it. Um, I got the bridge height set, or uh, the string height, I should say. Now the problem is I can't get it as low as I want to without it buzzing out right here. So I'm probably gonna have to shim the neck. So if I do that, I'll make an update video. For now, I'm just gonna leave it as it is. So without further ado, let's see how it sounds. fun making this guitar uh, a lot of fun making this video um, here it is good shot of it but yeah um, it's my new favorite guitar I gotta say my overall review of it as it as it was you know for Squire and Fender I probably would give it like two and a half or three stars and I only say that because it came broken the switch was broken when it came and um, I'll hold it up so you can see it better uh, the switch was broken when it came. I had to go out and buy a new switch to fix that. Um, ultimately, I could have just returned it and got another one, but you know, I already kind of started to work on it and I knew I could fix it. So, uh, you know, that aside though, I love this guitar. I love the 24 inch scale. I love the way that it sounds. Um, I actually like the neck pickup position better, um, which is crazy because this thing was made for um, really hot. The pickups are super hot. It sounds really good in all three positions. I mean, when you jam it down to bridge, it really jams down to bridge. I mean, it is hot. You put it on both, it sounds pretty good, but when you put it on bridge, you get that deep, bassy, just really great sound. So I give it a five star as far as the instrument itself. Um, 
it's fantastic. This particular instrument though, came in really bad shape. I was really disappointed in that. But I hope you really enjoyed uh, going through this journey with me. I, I found a lot of videos online, but nothing about this one um, with what I wanted to do to it. So if you have questions, please ask. Um, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions, provide drawings and diagrams if necessary. There really isn't any info out on this if you want to put one of these on this guitar, as far as like what bridge to do and how to measure it and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I had a really good time making this, and thank you all very, very much for watching, and uh, have a great time, and keep on rocking. Thanks!